Okay. So, this is a good question. And if I were teaching you a King's Indian in a private lesson, and we have this King's Indian position, and it can come from any move order, but we're talking about this position. Um, and I would, of course, this would be the first thing I would discuss, is why can't he take here? And of course he can't take, so let's, so let's get to the position at hand. So yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're afraid for them to take, then you could play knight bd7, and then after they castle, you can play e5. That has drawbacks that the knight sometimes doesn't want to be on a d7 in this position, or doesn't have a future maybe with the pawn on d4 like this. So white can play like rookie one and bishop f1 and just leave it there, and that could be tough. Um, but the other issue is that after knight bd7, sometimes white can play e5, which is a complicated sacrifice. Take knight g4 and, and e6. And then he sacks the pawn, it's okay, it's playable, but knight bd7 is okay, so you don't have to play e5 immediately, you could go knight bd7 and e5, but it's a different king's in the end. But there's no reason not to play e5, there's nothing, there's nothing to fear, but if you, but if you want to avoid, if you want to avoid exchange kings in the end, you could play knight bd7 with e5, if you, if you, if you know the guys can exchange. Now exchange kings in the end, mad genius is, is dreaded, is dreaded by many, by many uh, uh, fighting uh, players who want to play for the winners black because it's very difficult to uh, to get winning chances when the queens come off. So the the drawback of the ex exchange kings in the end for, for white is that it's simply uh, is not very ambitious and it doesn't really give white a, a real advantage. The, the way to get a real advantage is to keep the center somehow, maybe castle, knight c6 and d5, knight e7 and play for this massive space or to leave the pawn on d4. But, but just to exchange like this and give up your central pawn is um, yeah, you gotta own it, Andromeda. So just to give up the uh, the um, the center like this. Now there's a gaping hole on on uh, on on d4 as well. Okay. Now the first thing we need to discuss is after queen d8, rook d8. Many uh, players new to chess, new to kings Indian, they they don't know why knight takes c5 isn't good. Number one, and I asked that question in, in, in high school myself. Okay, so knight takes e5, and now we have knight takes e4. So we get the pawn back immediately, knight takes e4. So knight takes e5, knight takes e4. Um, if he goes knight f7, we have, well, we have knight c3, but no, but then knight d8, which is bishop c3, of course, and then, and then king takes and we win the piece. Okay, so um, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e5, and then if he goes bishop g5, trying to get a knight f6, we play, we could just play rook e8. If he tries this business, knight f6, we take and he cannot castle. And so bishop f5 and 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 black is um, black is uh, is good. If he if he goes for this little trick, because this is mate, then we actually first hit him with this in between move knight d7, connecting the rook, stopping mate. This is hanging, and the bishop is hanging. I'm going to go a little bit quickly, but you can you can review it later. Okay. Uh, so so um, yeah, that's. Uh, Yeah, how are you doing, Z Nation? Okay, so that's number one. E5. And the better move is D5 or, or Castle uh, to preserve the center. Okay, so take, take. So that's number one. Knight E5, we have Knight E4. But now, the way they usually play the exchange Kings Indian is they're trying to make a draw. Okay, so the way they usually do it is they will now play Queen takes D8, Rook takes D8, and then they're going to play something like bishop g5. Okay. Again, again, they don't want to play knight e5 because um, knight e4. So bishop g5. Now, Matt, genius, I lost this in um, in uh, middle school nationals. Um, actually, what happened was I lost this position. Um, the opponent played bishop g5 first and I made the mistake of not playing h6 first and kicking this bishop um, I made the mistake of playing e5 immediately, which loses, because now you can't play e5 because you start out pinned, and now knight d5, and and you're losing. Thanks, Gary, for the raid in the middle of uh, of, a, of a lecture. Thank you for the big raid. And so now, and so now, knight knight d5. We're lecturing on the exchange kings in the end. So. So, knight e5 and threatening knight takes c7, right? So I can't play e5 with the bishop on uh, on g5. 
So you gotta play h6 first or c5. You can't do this and, and allow and allow this exchange here. You're crushed. So same goes for this position. Now he has this massive threat of knight d5. Okay? Mad genius, you're watching, yes, I hope. Okay, so he has this massive threat of uh of knight d5. So how do you stop knight d5? Yeah. Thank you, John. The gift. This is a massive threat of, of, of knight d5. Um, how do we stop knight d5? If you, if you push h6, I've had students do this, but you lose to bishop f6. You don't have time for this, and you get the double threat as well. So, I mean, you'd have to... I had a student win a game with knight d7 and, and survive, and, and, and kept the bishop pair, rook, rook b8, and survive like this, okay? Um... So, uh, yeah, but you don't, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to allow that. So anyone, anybody know some moves? So to, to prevent, you know, catastrophic material loss here because knight d5 is threatened. So there are three main moves in the exchange, uh, King's Indian here for black. One in particular I'll recommend from this game, but, but there are three. C6 is one, and that's a logical move. Rook E8 is the other, getting up. Let's take a look at C6 first. C6 is a sharp variation where you sacrifice a pawn. Knight E5, Rook E8, and now, and now, if he moves back, we just take, of course. So he won't move back, he'll actually castle long. And now if Rook E5, he has Rook D8, which is a crushing blow, because because um, if Knight E8, there's, there's uh, Rook C8, it's also F4. And if he plays Rook E8, there's Bishop F6. And he's crushed. So, so after rook e8, they usually castles, uh, castle, and now knight a6 with knight c5, and there's there's um, there's pressure. Like for example, um, if he plays like f4, there's knight c5, and this is hanging. If he gets rid of the the knight, then this is hanging as well. This is a very ugly position for him. Let's say um, we could just take here, and his position is is pretty much destroyed. Um, bishop e6 and knight d7 and pick up the knight, put the knight on e5. With this knight on e5, it's a massive outpost. Nothing can be done to stop this knight on e5 from just wreaking havoc on the, on the white position. I'm going quickly, but you can review later, okay? Um, so, c6 is one move. It's complicated. The simplest move is just rook e8, which, which stops the, uh, the threat. Bishop f6 is a mistake because knight d5, we def double defend. The bishop and c7, bishop d, d8, and actually black is better after c6, and black has all the dark squares. And you'll see that, you'll see that uh, later in the game we're going to look at. So rook e8 is the, uh, is the simple move. Uh, rook e8 is the simplest move. But, um, but it's pretty dry, because after knight d5, knight d5, it's all forced. Knight d5, knight d5, cd, c6. This is pretty dry. Bishop c4, c takes d, bishop d5. This has been played, knight a6, and it's it's tough to win. You get any chances as black, and it's black's, you know, it's playing for a draw, basically, both sides. But, um, yeah, knight c7, and long game, okay? So, but that's, it's not like it's bad for white. It's just doesn't really offer white much. A lot of players play the exchange just to make life uh, miserable for a uh, 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 free-spirited player as black. Okay, so e5, take, take, queen d8 here, and now I will recommend what Kasparov played against um, against Danilov here, he played knight bd7. I like this move the best, this is the game we're going to look at. Danilov, Kasparov, 1982, I believe, the World Junior Championship. So this looks like it doesn't do anything, it doesn't break the pin, but actually if he plays knight d5, which he did, um, then we can just now play c6 and there's no no threats because we, we guarded everything let's say that he castles however mad genius you do need to know now if knight e5 um, is threatening rook d8 so you do need to be able to stop that so you have one move you can't play rook e8 because of knight b5 and you lose um, you know you, you lose on c7 so you actually have to play rook f8 
This is the only move. And, and this position is um, complex, but after knight d5, again, you could, uh, I think you could just play c6 here, huh? I don't think. Yeah, c6 is fine. You could also play knight e4. But okay, so rook f8 is, is, is the normal, yeah. Okay, so anyway, knight d7, knight d5, and, and here we go. c6, and Dimilov was uh, playing for a draw in this position. And Kaspar brings his king towards the center. White gets the two bishops. However, this square is very weak. Castles, and now um, we don't play knight e4 because rook takes d7. This would be a blunder. So instead, we played knight c5 first, threatening this. And now Dimilov uh, made... Um, I think a move that, well, it's a bad position anyway, but he made a move that lost the game. Bishop takes f6. This is a big blunder. You see the evaluation dip. And now after bishop takes f6, well, you see that all of black's, light's, uh, white's dark squares are, are, are finished. They're very weak. Knight will come to d4 in some lines. And watch this uh, career of this bishop now. This bishop's going to come to... Uh, a5. So watch how Kasparov does it. He puts his opponent. It looks like a simple position, but actually White's pieces are have no future. This bishop on e2 is terrible. It's blocked in by. Um, it's as bad. Yeah, it's about as bad as the bishop c5. Yeah, that's why it hurt me when you played that move. So the bishop has no future on e2. The knight on f3 has uh, has no future. So so bishop d3 a5 to protect. Um, stopping b4 and solidify this knight. And now rook e1, rook e8. And this is to free up the bishop so it can come to this diagonal. So we defend this pawn. And now bishop d8 exclaim. There's no penetration on this on this um, file. As Bafinik said, a open file is only useful if the rooks can use it. But here this rook cannot use the file because the knight guards the only entry point, and the rook on d6 is not doing anything. So this rook is not really so useful on d1 after all, is it? So g3, a4, and you see he keeps improving his position, and black's, white's position just keeps falling apart. And this rook's are traded off, and now this rook is no good. And now we have this bad rook versus this very good rook. Yes, it's the same same player. If knight e5, rook d2. Yeah. Um, so bishop h3, f6, defending this. This rook is live now. And watch how he, he finishes him off. King e7, just improve the king. Knight d3, knight b4, all of a sudden they're mating threats. Let's say he doesn't do anything. Check, and mate. Okay. So um, a3, now knight back to c5, knight going into b3. And you can see these pieces are just no good. h5, stopping any funny business. G5, a very good move because if he takes it, then rook d2 and it's mate, actually. It's going to be mate. Yeah, I mean, very soon. It'll be some sort of mate, right? So, um, G5, and now, uh, yeah, rook e2 and just knight b3. If knight g5, then knight d2 check picking up the rook, so king king b1, and then king f6 or g4, even this is just, it's just really hopeless stuff. And you can see how bad the position is, even a move like rook g1, and he can't move anything, and if he tries to defend it with f3, then, then knight d4 is picking up the, the rook and the bishop, but it's even worse because this move is just a nasty finish, knight a1, king d3, and this is mate. Now made. So you see just with a simple position how much life there can be uh, in the game. Um, and this is what uh, Kasparov brought to the table in this game. Brilliant game actually. Um, shows you just what you can do in a simple position. And here, um, here Dan Danilov resigned. He couldn't move. So he just resigned because there's no moves. Bishop f1, we pick up the, the bishop. Bishop h3, we pick up the pieces. He can't move anything. If he moves the knight, let's say he moves the knight here. Just rook d1 again. And just rook g1, picking up this, and knight d4. So, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. 
So the answer is that white can take, it just doesn't offer white um, really good chances for an advantage. But you do need to know exactly what you're doing against it or you could, you know, fall quickly in the opening, which you want to avoid. You just want to avoid falling for, for, uh, for these pins, okay? Knight d5 and, and all of this. This is what you want to avoid, right? You want to avoid these traps. So, so you have three options here. You have c6, you have rook e8, and you have knight bd7. Those are three options. I think there's even a move. I mean, is there even a move rook d6? I don't remember, but no, not rook d6. It comes at some. It comes at some in some variation, not rook d6, but it comes in some variation of the king's in the end. Not here. That just looks ridiculous. He has c5, but uh, it comes in some lines. But but anyway, you just want to avoid the the pin. So rook e8, c6. I played all all three and knight d7. All right. Thank you. And on we go. Thank you, Matt Genius. Appreciate that. Thank you, the hound. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll save that one. But that, that, that's the game that I, I used to, uh, to teach the exchange, uh, exchange Kings Indian. Yeah. And, and after you, after you just study that, that video, you don't really need to know much else about the exchange Kings Indian. But you do need to know it. You do need to know it. 